Right, um, this is lesson two, uh, and this is, did you know about the Computer Misuse Act 1990? The Computer Misuse Act 1990 was introduced based on recommendation from the ERC um, after various incidents throughout the years. Um, namely one with Gold and Steichen um, in the 18... Steichen, sorry. Um, in 1984, in the 1980s, um, these two people, one of them saw someone enter a password in a BT exchange, um, saw the login details, two of them went away and hacked at the system using someone else, this person's details they sent. Um, and they got away with it because they got acquitted because of various counter laws. Um, basically, in the nine, 1990, the Computer Misuse Act was brought in to stop this um, and to bring back a bit more punishment. Fine, fine and punishment isn't a severe. Um, usually about £5,000 fine um, or six months imprisonment. Um, so yeah, and what is to do try and stop people hacking into other people's computers, doing what they didn't, watching someone into the details in and then go and go on to another computer to use it. Um, so yeah, that, that's the whole point of the Communist Act. Is that um, how it affects us is people get people do that they get access to our deta uh, bank details, our personal information, anything. Um, people can, it has been done in America. Um, people have done that to the Pentagon, um, the big military installation, and of course that's brought down once or twice to come close to bringing down the defense network in America. Um, and there's people in the con this country have tried that, used to see other people's passwords. I'm not just watching other people's passwords, but hacking as well. Um, without having to get past running programs, modifying computers. Because um, the Computer Mischief Act doesn't just say you watch someone put your password in and you're done for it. Also, says that people aren't allowed to modify their computers to an extent where they're doing things they shouldn't be doing, as in criminal activities, um, things of point, hacking programs on their own programs that will be trying to scan the websites or the internet for um, people's usernames and passwords trying to go past the security on websites and get all that information instead of then hacking someone else's computer. Um, for instance, you get someone who would go on eBay. Now, eBay's got quite good security. Now, if someone puts a password and username to find out these hacking devices on the internet, on my computer and logs on the internet and goes into eBay. You'll probably find that you might get somewhere with one or two out of God knows how many million, thousand, whatever people and he'll start getting into it. But then it when he gets into it, he can't get any further because if you want to go and get some money out swindle money out of his personal account, he's then going to go through paper because obviously eBay you don't pay for it for eBay you pay for it through paper. Um, so you wouldn't get any fired if it comes straight away. Um, and plus, eBay and a lot of these sites, they recognise the fact that if you're using your computer so, for a certain amount of time, they recognise the fact that yeah, this, this user is logging on to that computer. So if they suddenly log on to a different, different computer, it's going to be quite weird as to why they've got as many hundred miles or thousands of the different country or whatever. Or they'll uh, ask questions, they might ask you to sign in again or use different, ask you details that only the person that has the account with them. Um, so it's also so it's the not just so like I say it's to stop people hacking into hacking access to people's details by using hacking programs and watching things and it's the the term by watching or you watch this you watch one open a password and trying to get things you should be doing they'll come down on your heart. Um, the other thing is to also stop criminals getting using it as crimes because people the criminals. Are, if there's security there to stop them, 
that it means that as soon as the criminals know that they're going to use a computer to store information on it or use for criminal activities, it's going to go from the computer on the end as soon as they log on and start doing that. There's going to be flags going up on websites saying, he's searching this sort of thing, he's searching that, he's doing this, he's doing that, because security software on the, web, on the internet, on the websites might come up saying, something's gone wrong, but yeah, report it. Um, so how it can affect us? Well, there's ways to print it, and that is to have an, on your computers at home, because your college ones already have it, just have antivirus software put on. A great one is Avast. Uh, it's free and it is bloody good. It's better than what these ones you have to pay for. Um, and that gives you a free membership each year. Um, for more information on that, just go on to avast.com. A V A S T dot com. Um, the other thing you can do is when you sign up to the site, put a, obviously a username, use letters and numbers for your username, something like, I don't know, Joe Blogs 12, whatever. Um, and for your password, make sure you use a mix of numbers and letters. And if you want to, which is normally makes a bit more secure, it's what I do, is also put into characters to say A, B, C, uh, so A, B, 1, 2, C, uh, D, B, 3, sort of thing. So you're using a mix. Because um, then a lot of people, a lot of hackers, they don't expect people to use things like the app sign and little dots and slashes or whatever. So of course, if you put, kind of make uh, if you join a website or whatever it is, you start joining, and you're allowed to use characters into it other than letters and numbers, that'll make it a bit more secure because hackers won't don't normally have the common sense to say people might be used to secure on. They have to go and have some software to do it for computer. So that is explained. Um, so yeah, at college we have anti we have antivirus all put on it, and at college we have safeguards because the IT techs are constantly watching what happens. If we start doing something bad on our accounts, it comes it comes up so in red flags on our username at, on the IT specialist on the IT guys at college, their computers, and they will start saying investigating us for what we've been doing because they can see what everything we do on at college. Um, so at least we know we're in college, we, we can stay safe. Um, and like I say, the, this app is only come in because of the brief shiffering and gold case where they hacked them by watching someone else. So even though they got appealed, they got away a bit in the end, they brought about a hell of a lot of stuff which has helped, if they help bring about law. Now, weirdly enough, they were acquitted and they now, um, because apparently they were doing it for leisure, um, don't know much about it, I mean, I don't know really much about this, but um, all knows they hacked the system by watching someone um, and they got acquitted. What I do know from my some research and it's that these two people um, who are working together, they were apparently doing for leisure. Is weird because hack, if you're a hacker, you obviously they're doing something for a reason, but apparently they did for leisure, and that's how they got let off because it wasn't enough evidence. But now, um, one of them he actually goes out and he helps with IT. He's he's written books um, regarding IT and regarding what he did, what he did, and how to prevent it. So, so what you you will find there are some bad things that do happen, which do occur, but they're criminals, they're now helping people up throughout the country, and probably their books have been probably published all over the world, helping people to understand security. So that's basically where we're coming from, regarding security, we're regarding it. And that is all for this lesson. Um, thank you for watching, and uh, watch yours. Bye.